Okay, it's 7.30. Okay, I guess it's time to start the meeting. Uh, good evening. I'd like, to, I'd like to welcome everyone to September or December 2021 meeting of the Squirrel Hill Historical Society. Um, as is our tradition, I'd like to start by uh, acknowledging our officers, board members, and other volunteers who make this all possible. Um, starting with uh, co-president Jim Hammond, vice president Ellen Wilson, uh, and our board of directors who uh, many of them have multiple roles. Uh, we have Jeannie Benstock, myself, Toby Chapman, uh, Audrey Glickman, Jim Hammond, Tony and Davina, Stanley Klein, Todd Miller, Helen Wilson, Evelyn Young, and former president Michael Urban. Uh, if you know anyone that's, in, that's interested in helping or would like to join the organization, uh, please refer them to our website. Uh, And we're currently in the middle of our 2022 membership drive, and we encourage everyone to renew as soon as possible. Uh, if, you're not, if, you, if you have not already done so. Also, if you know of anyone who might be interested in joining, please refer them uh, to the webpage and consider giving them membership as a gift during the holiday season here. It's relatively inexpensive. It, $15 for an individual and $25 for a couple. I'd also like to mention that the 2022 Squirrel Hill calendar is available at Littles and at Riverstone Books and can also be uh, ordered from Squirrel Hill Urban Coalition at shuc.org. It's fairly inexpensive, $20 approximately. Um, you know, we've been holding meetings for about 21 years. Up until about a year ago, these were live meetings held at the Church the Redeemer. And But we had to switch to Zoom meetings to protect our viewers from COVID-19. Um, we'd hoped to have a live meeting in January, but had to reconsider due to the continued spread of COVID. Our number one priority, priority is looking out for the safety of our members and other attendees. Um, looking forward, we have a number of interesting presentations set up for the early next year. Uh, these include a story about the Chinese laundrymen of Squirrel Hill in February, a uh, story about one Holocaust survivor's journey in March, and a presentation titled The Characters of Alderdice in April. You can find further details about these meetings on our website. Um, tonight's speaker is Bill Walter. He's a retired eighth grade social studies teacher who taught at the community day school for 23 years. Um, he spearheaded an 18 year effort to where students collected six million pop can tabs that represent Jewish lives lost in the Holocaust. Uh, very interesting project. Um, and these were placed in 150 glass aquarium tanks stacked from floor to ceiling in this classroom and they're now displayed in a sculpture at the corner of Ford Avenue and Beecher Boulevard. Uh, Rather go into further details, I'd like to pass Mike on to Bill, and he can he can give you further details. Okay, and we're going to put the slides up, I guess. Yes, here. Okay. All right, so I got to tell you, I'm thrilled to be able to talk about the sculpture. It's been well over two years since I've had the chance. I'm a, probably a little more comfortable being in front of people that I've never done a Zoom talk about this, but that's okay. Um, I did want to mention uh, just briefly what got me interested in the Holocaust, and it was a long time ago. My brother 
was a senior in North Braddock Scott High School. Some of you may remember that school. And I was a seventh grader in 1961. So that makes me 73 years old, I'm pretty old. And um, he did a project in the spring of, of, of uh, 61 for history class and it was about World War II. He bought a book and uh, it was just recently written and it was called Eichmann Commandos. I, I had heard of Eichmann because that was about the same time as the trial in Israel. So he gave me this book, which was clearly inappropriate for a seventh grader, but I read that book and you know, you, you had read history books where 6 million Jews were killed and that's a number and so you just think 6 million. But this book, 188 pages, told the story of the trial of the Eichmann Commandos. I didn't know what Eichmann Commandos were. And it told individual stories about them. And it was breathtakingly difficult to read, especially for a seventh grader. But I learned from that, that a number is just a number. I, I, uh, Stalin is credited with saying that the death of a single man is a tragedy. The death of a million men is a, a statistic. And, and I thought that's exactly right. Six million really means nothing. But if you look at the individual stories, each of them has a story to tell. Um, to me, that made it, that book led me to, you know, read all kinds of other things. Not right away. When I got to high school and college, uh, I, I read a, a, as much as I could find at that time about the Holocaust. So this story, this is going to come from my perspective. What, what did I do uh, uh, to help create this, this sculpture? Um, and I, 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 you can put up the next slide. I, this is another uh, a quote that I like to use. That the loss of a single child is the loss of infinite possibility. We know the numbers in at the time are staggering. 45 million civilians died in the Holocaust. 45 million civilians died in the Holocaust. And most of them were, you know, bombing of Dresden or something like that. But 6 million were murdered. There were Jews that were murdered. 5 million others were murdered. They hadn't been in anybody's way. They were just Jewish or some other uh, type of person that, that, that the Nazis didn't like. 11 million. That's a staggering number. And one million and a half children were killed. It's just, the numbers are overwhelming. So this quote to me uh, said a lot. And that's why, let me show you the next slide. This is a little boy named Tomas Kolka. Tomas was four years old in 1939. And he was uh, lived in, outside of Prague in Bohemia and Moravia. And what used to be uh, Czechoslovakia, but part of Czechoslovakia had been taken away. The Germans moved in there in March of 39 and took the rest of Czechoslovakia. He had not yet gone to school. His aunt survived and told how he was looking forward to going. He would be five in June, looking forward to going to school. But he, but the Germans took over and Tomas was Jewish. So he was not permitted to go to school. Uh, by March of 1942, three years later, the family, his mother, his father, his grandmother and Tomas were sent to Theresienstadt. But Tomas and the grandmother were considered to be, have no value. So they were sent off to Sobibor where they were immediately gassed and executed. He was less than seven years old. Stories like that left a, a huge effect on me. Um, and I went back to, you know, the loss of a single child's loss of infinite possibilities. Who knows what this young boy would have been. So I, and I wanted to show you one more. This is a little girl coming up to the next slide. Jacqueline Morgenstern. She was, she was born in 1932. They were from uh, Romania. She moved to Paris because of anti-Semitism in Romania. And then by... Uh, 1940, the Germans occupied Paris, so they moved on to Marseille and had papers saying they were Christian. So they survived until 44. At 44, the mother, the father, and Jacqueline were sent to Auschwitz, but uh, the father was uh, 
sent to the men's camp. These two were actually sent to the women's camp. And but the mother got ill and died, and uh, so they, they gassed her, sent this little girl off to another camp where she was with 20 other young people. She was 13 at the time of this, where they did tests on her three days before the camp was liberated. They uh, killed all 20 of those kids. One, I wanted this one pop tab for each individual, one for Jacqueline, one for Tomas. Um, so how did this happen? Uh, in April of 19, or uh, yeah, 1997, April 1997, I was, I, I taught the Holocaust and one of my um, colleagues, Mickey Baker, came in and showed me a, a an email she had gotten from her, from her daughter who lived outside of Chicago. It was, uh, and it was about a school called Mahomet Seymour Junior High School. They were called junior high schools then. And they were collecting pop tabs. And, and uh, Mickey said, well, you know, that might be a good way to get, to help understand. You get a visual out of it. Uh, and they did, they collected, actually collected this junior high school, collected 11 million pop tabs. And, uh, and they actually took those 11 million tabs, they dumped them on their, they had a school assembly, dumped them on the, the floor of the uh, gymnasium and they were gonna recycle them. But a, a, uh, an artist called, named Jeffrey Shire came and took those tabs and he's, and you may have heard of Wings of Witness where he goes to schools and they make wings and then they you know, keep them. And uh, so he does that all over with the 11 million tabs. But that's a great idea. Uh, collect pop tabs. And so I got the head of school, Sue Cantowitz, to allow me to, to go ahead with this. And I asked the middle school students, if you think this would be okay to do? Eighth graders were good with it. They were just about done. And seventh and sixth graders were good with it. So the first month, after one month, I had 20,000 pop tabs. We started collecting on May the 4th or the 5th. I can't remember. That was, that was Yom Hashoah. It was in May that year, May 4th or 5th. I thought that's a great day to start. We'll start on Yom HaShoah. And, uh, and after, by the end of May, I had 20,000 tabs, except, and I thought that was great, except when you divide 20,000 into 6 million, that's 25 years <laughs> at that pace. And I felt like I might have to, you know, pro move this along, along a little bit. So I would do anything for a pop tab, uh, literally anything. Uh, I used to run and I ran a lot and you know, I live in North Huntington. So there's, there are rural roads in North Huntington. There are rural roads in Penn Township. There are rural roads in Hempfield Township. I'm running along these roads and I would see a pop can. The people throw this stuff out. Pop can on the ground. I thought, oh crap. So I'd have to lean over. I'd have to take the tab off that pop and put it in my pocket. And I'd come up, my wife would tell you, I'd come out my pockets be bulging. I didn't do much running. Did mostly walking from can to can, but there they were. Uh, I, I uh, would run out those, and I saw a lot of different routes I would take, but I'd run, once in a while I'd go back to the same route and I'd see a can lean over, I'd have got the tab. So I was a tad bit obsessed about this. So I would bring bags with me, giant eagle bags, and collect the cans because I don't want to stop every time I run past that can. So and, and when I'd fill up a bag, I'd set it down and I'd come back in the car and pick them up, give them to the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts would pull off tabs for me. Uh, anything I could do to get this thing moving along, I did. Um, we, I, I used to go to, I like high school football. Norwin High School has a football team, but they don't have can pop. They have the fountains. So, but Penn Trafford, the neighboring district, they gave cans. So they have this big stadium with the, uh, the stadium seats that are, that are open. And underneath those stadium seats, lots of cans on Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, I'm underneath the stands at, at, at the Penn Trafford High School. And I would come out with literally garbage bags filled with cans. So we get them that way. I started to do in the school, 
I, 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 this is from all from my perspective of what I did to get this thing moving along. And let me say, before I go on, thousands of people were involved in this, literally thousands of people. I get taps from everywhere. I get it. I got them from California. I got them from uh, uh, Florida. I got one uh, from uh, North Carolina, from a, a woman who had gone to um, one of the colleges up 79. Uh, it wasn't Grove City, but it was one of those ones up 79. At Westminster. And she was older at that time, even older than me. And uh, so she wrote me a note and she had like, and uh, she went to Westminster College up 79, but she lived in North Carolina. They would send her their magazines and one of the girls at, at Westminster was collecting pop tabs for me. So she saw that. She liked the idea that we were collecting pop tabs for, uh, you know, for the purpose of showing what 6 million looked like. And so she sent me some tabs and her note said, and I wish I'd kept all the notes I got. She said, um, we don't drink as much as we used to, but here's 150 pop tabs or something like that. The school for the deaf in Swissville did Anne Frank. And I didn't know they were collecting for me. So they invited me over to watch Anne Frank and gave me at the uh, intermission 150,000 pop tabs that they collected. I got from Catholic schools, there's a Catholic school on 30, on, uh, I can't remember the name of the school, they collected for me. Uh, Norwin High School collected for me. I collected, go to the next tab, uh, the next slide. I would go into my neighborhood and I, I put a note on every, we have 500 homes in the neighborhood, put a note on the, I put a note in that said, I told them what I was doing, collecting pop tabs, trying to get to 6 million. Um, if you could help me with that, you know, you can put in a little butter dish or put them in something out when you do recycling, I'll find them and then I'll collect them. So I would go out, get up at four o'clock in the morning, head out on the, with my flashlight and walk around the neighborhood and collect the pop tabs. And, uh, and so every week, when I collect the pop tab and, and 25, at least 25 homes regularly collected for me. So I wanted to keep them updated. And this is what I would put in. This is one of the later ones that I put in. You know, I've collected 38,831 the past two weeks in Country Hills, which is where I live. And I get the Country Hills total. This is how many that the, that the people in the neighborhood included okay. the church that I went to in that total. And anybody in North Huntington that I went to, I included in that total. But then you know, I, I kept them updated because I wanted them to keep on doing it. So we did that. Um, I, I, there, there were so many things that we did to get pop tabs. Uh, we'd have parties at the school, and uh, I would, I would, I, I, I would tell them if you get to a certain number, and I don't remember what the number was, and and uh, uh, you get reach that number, we'll have a, 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 a ice cream party. And especially the little ones, they didn't know what they were collecting it for, but they wanted the ice cream party. So they, you know, they would uh, make sure they got the taps. So we would, I would, uh, you know, have a party for them and, uh, and then we'd count them. Uh, the counting was, was difficult. Um, at first, I decided I was going to count them myself because I don't trust anybody. I, and I knew I was going to be accurate. I knew it. So, you know, you're sitting along there and you're going two, four, six, eight, ten. And then you mark it down on a piece of paper. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And I didn't bring any with me because when we're when I'm live, I like to show them, but their tabs are different. Some of them come from cat food. Some of them come from or bent in some way. And they're different. Some are green, some are red. So you're counting two, four, six, it's very tedious, two, four, six, eight, ten. But then you would see one, a red one or a green one or one that's bent. And you would think this is different from the other ones. <laughs> I don't know why this affects me every time I think about this. This is different. This is a human being. This is someone's life that I'm counting here. And so it meant more to me. And when I was counting in those times that I would stop and look at that tab would bring that home to me. And I, and after a while I realized I could never count 6 million myself. So I, I had the kids do it too. And I hoped, I hoped that they would feel the same way. 
but they'd see something different. But we did a lot of different things with that. And when we were counting them, I'd have, oh, uh, go down one more, another slide. I started putting them in my classroom. These are the first ones I did. And if you'll notice on the bottom right hand side, that's Babi R. I, 33,000, so they were very specific about the number of people they killed at Babi R on September 29th and 30, 1941. Very specific. And, um, and I thought, okay, I've got these fish tanks. I'm going to uh, go village by village. I'll say, you know, this is Babi Yar. That's a ravine outside of Kiev. But maybe I'll do each village have their own or each area have their own fish tank. But the problem with that was that you, many of them, you would only fill up halfway or, you know, and I, I, I couldn't possibly get the fish tanks, enough fish tanks to do that. This is very early on. And I would, driving home, and I did go Commercial Avenue from the home, get down, get down through Swissville, Commercial Avenue and back. Uh, as I was driving through, and if it was recycle day, and I saw a fish tank, I was taking that fish tank, uh, and I'd fix it up, I'd tape it so that I could put tabs in it. Um, we got fish tanks, because uh, I got, ended up with, a, as it said, a hundred, it was like 153 fish tanks, which took up a large portion of my classroom, 14 feet long, 14 feet long when it was complete, four foot tall, four foot deep. It was a staggering amount of uh, pop tabs and I wanted them to see them. It wouldn't have done any good if it was in something that was opaque that you couldn't see. I wanted them to see that and see what that looked like. And look at, and look at these, these are filled with people. In my mind, they're filled with people. So, you know, I, my, my daughter went to Teal College and we were up there, uh, we were up there for some kind of a family thing. And they have these little commercials that come on that tell you about what's happening and they, uh, you know, you've seen those where they have run through a whole bunch of things that's happening in the area. And my wife says, oh, somebody's getting rid of fish tanks at a, at a, uh, at a store down in uh, 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 Greenville. Now we didn't see this. So now we have to wait until it rotates all those things back through again to find out where those fish tanks were. And there were like 25 fish tanks. So I bought them, but now I have to figure out how the heck am I going to get these home? So we had, we had all kinds of, we had all kinds of issues uh, to take care of. But with each, each class that went through, each, each eighth grade would leave the next Seven to move up to eight, six to move up to seven, five to move up to six, and we have new kids. And each time there's these fifth graders, now they already were counting tabs with us. I'll go down to the next one, next, uh, next slide. This is, well, before I talk about that, this is, you know, as it's starting to get larger and I'm looking for things to put them in, and I had cats, so I was using cat containers, but that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to get them into, you know, actual fish tanks so it, it temporarily i put him in that thing uh, get, get down one more time next slide this is this is i i regret that i didn't take a photograph when we were done because there weren't any of these they were all fish tanks and various sizes but uh this is what it was beginning to look in that like in my room uh, it took up a great deal of space there uh, let's do one more slide And uh, so, did I, what do you have up there? Go one more. There we go. So I was, uh, <clears throat> I would be asked to go to different schools and talk. This is at Norwin, I, this is at Norwin fourth grade, Stewartsville Elementary. Um, I, the, the Norwin people, because I lived out there, uh, were so good to me. Uh, the church that I went to, I would put up, um, I put a big container in the, you know, in the uh, where people could come in and just put tabs in there. Uh, McKeesport Library collected for me. Uh, There's so many people that collected, but but I would go here, and this is uh, one of our friends who taught there, and she uh, had our students bring them, and they would fill coffee coffee cans up, and when I'd go, they she'd give me the coffee cans and. You know, so she collected a lot, uh, but I went to uh, various schools and sometimes I would, I took, at one point I took um, um, Mrs. Barron Monroe's 
and she had a school at CDS. I took her mother along and she told her story. Um, but, you know, people were really good about this. So we, we, once we got them all collected, uh, counted and collected, and uh, we, we had to decide what we're going to do. So, uh, like, there's a, like I said, many people, Sue Kantowitz gave the uh, initial uh, okay to it. But once we decided we were going to do something with it, and my vision was very small. My vision was, I'm going to have these in the classroom. They're going to be able to see what that staggering number looks like. And, and that would, I mean, we would talk about it. We could, uh, you know, and people actually, there were students from another school came to just look at them in my classroom. Um, the lower school kids would sometimes come up and look at them. Uh, but my vision was at some point, because it did take up a lot of my classroom, at some point I'm just going to have to recycle these tabs and, you know, get my classroom back. But they sat in there for five years. And, um, and, it, and, and it was, I'm trying to remember who came up with the idea. It might have been Avi Monroe came up with an idea. Let's do, it was Avi. It came up with an idea. Let's do something with these tabs. Let's do something. So Judy Murray and, uh, well, first of all, well, one of the things I forgot to mention was six million tabs, 14 feet long, four feet tall, four feet deep. That's a lot of weight. So what I really didn't want to happen is the classroom below me, you know, to end up with six million tabs on top of them. So we had the, uh, the uh, eighth graders had to estimate the weight of the of the all of it they, they estimate how much a tab weighed and multiply that by six million or a group of tabs and multiply it and they estimate the weight of a single uh, you know fish tank and then well that one they could weigh uh, and then give a weight and then we told the head of maintenance and the head of maintenance says it could, it's good you're good so we did that um but but once it was decided something was going to happen with these Judy Murray, who was the uh, artist, uh, art teacher at CDS, and a woman named El Elana Houlihan, who was an artist in residence who worked with recyclable materials, uh, worked together and decided, uh, and, and their thought was, we're gonna, they're gonna let the students come up with designs. And from those designs, we'll pick the best one in groups of students. So, uh, do the next slide. This is the initial uh, one that we chose. Um, there were so many, every student had, what we did not want, what we did not want was something that would be frightening to, we, that's a K-8 school. We don't want, you know, little kids to be frightened of a sculpture. So it had to be, it couldn't be a mother and her child. It couldn't be, like, like Cheryl, my wife and I went to, um, uh, Prague and we, we went to a place called Leditsa, which was a village outside of Prague that was after the assassination of uh, Reinhard Heydrich, uh, Hitler took revenge on all kinds of people, including this village. And these were Christians. And, you know, uh, I, I forget the numbers, but uh, like a hundred, oh, here, 173 men were lined up against a, a farmer's wall and shot, including anyone over the age of 15. Um, 203 women were sent to Ravensbrook. Uh, 105 children were sent off to various places. Some of them were considered to be Aryan-like. And so they took them and gave them the families. But 82 of those died at Kelmno. Um, and there's a statue there of a woman and a child. And it's a beautiful statue, but I didn't want that. I didn't want anything like that. Uh, we wanted something that would be that could still represent the Holocaust, but be hopeful. And so they came up with this, and I think this is brilliant. Um, this was their initial sculpture. So uh, let's see, then the next one to show you a, a more advanced uh, copy of it to, to make it look more like it does now. It, the, the, it, and it looks just like this. Uh, the walls are staggered, seven feet tall and nine feet tall. Um, each block has, uh, I think there's 963 blocks, 6,200 tabs estimated in each one. Um, 
So that's what that looks like. So now we have, um, we have the tabs, we have an idea what we want to do. And my thought was, okay, we will, let's put up plexiglass. I thought, all right, well, I know. Plexiglass and take those tabs and just dump them all in there. Because, you know, no work involved in that, just dump them all in. But that's not what was decided. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see what was decided. There's glass blocks that you might see in a uh, someone's basement. Um, we got those uh, donated to us with a little slit in the top, a little <laughs> slit in the top. I thought, oh no. Um, uh, go to the next slide and I'll show you what the next, uh, yeah, and this is fi the final one uh, from those, those, those girls that did this. And the next one, next slide. Okay, so here's a, here is what it looks like. Now, I'm thinking to myself, oh, we spent all four and a half years collecting and counting pop tabs, collecting and counting pop tabs for four and a half years. Oh, by the way, the, the kids at CDS were not satisfied with six million. They, they, they said to me, there were 11 million people killed and murdered in the Holocaust. It's only fair if we do 11 million, but um, yeah, six million was good enough for me. <laughs> that was a that was a lot of work, and, and and five million more. I just couldn't bear to think about four and a half more years of doing that. But um, so now we got these blocks. You can only put one tab at a time in there, one tab at a time. So I'm thinking to myself, um, this is not what I wanted. But a further review, I thought, this is what I want. Because all those times that we were counting tabs, whole different groups of kids did that. Oh, and I should say this. My wife uh, teaches at, taught at Norman High School also. And she, uh, she taught chorus. She had a large chorus. So every, um, every December, they would do a concert. And then they'd have one week where they were they they didn't have any uh, you know concerts over, and the next group of kids would be coming in in January. So she really couldn't start new music. So she had them counting top tabs for me. So I'd take a lot of tabs over there. Northern high school kids would count the tabs, and ask anybody who counts the tabs. After you do that for half an hour, your fingers are filthy. So you know we had to take time to count the tabs, make sure they wash their hands, and then get them back to class. But uh, it was a tedious process. But now we're going to do it more. I, I kind of, I, I changed this whole thing because it was too, too many slides for this. So I did, I accidentally got one out of order, but go to the next one. This will show you what we, what we were doing once we were done. We didn't know what we were doing once we were done. The boxes in the back were, ta uh, were tabbed, were, were uh, empty were boxes for these uh, these blocks, and these are blocks. Once we filled them, we put them there in the sub basement at the school, uh, with no way of knowing, you know, what we're ever going to do with them. I, I, I so what did, what did we do? We I did the same thing. I had after school parties. Um, I gave them. Uh, I I I said, well, a pizza party with some pop. And, but you're not getting that pop. <laughs> you're gonna count tabs first. Tabs first, because if I gave them the pizza first, uh-uh, they, they, you know, they would be gone. So, uh, and people took these blocks home and, uh, and filled them at home. The next slide will show you a family uh, working from home. Oh, well this, oh, this is, we're actually working in the school. I got these, okay, I see. Working in the school, taking, the, uh, taking them out, taking, the tabs out of the uh, fish tanks, put them in plastic bags so people could take them home and fill up the tank. And, and the woman in the black is Alana Houlihan, who is the who came up with the idea, all this. She came up with all of that. So there's that one. The next one shows a family, actually, next slide, shows a family, uh, father, the son, and he's long gone. The little boy is long gone from CDS, putting them in one at a time. I go, oh, one at a time. It's not just one at a time. The tabs sometimes are bent. Remember, I said they're bent. So those ones don't want to go in so easy. So this is how bad I was. But I, 
people would bring me the ones that were bent and I'd take them home and get that hammer out and straighten them out because I'm getting them in there. But, oh, by the way, once we collected 6 million tabs, once we had that 6 million, I, uh, I found it really hard to stop people from giving me more tabs. And I didn't want to say that, no, don't need them. I didn't want to say that. So, but uh, what I'd say is, this is great. This is going to put us over the top. We already were over the top. So thank you. You know, we're done now. So <laughs> I, didn't, I wanted people to give them to me because they went to all the work and I didn't want to insult anybody by saying no. But so we have a lot of extra tabs in the sub basement too, just in case he, any of these blocks <laughs> close. But there, there's a little boy and I forget his name, but he's long gone from CDS. The next one shows, uh, this one kind of cracked me up. Uh, because <laughs> she's just loving this, she's loving this. Uh, uh, she's a terrific girl, but she really didn't care to do the one at a time, one at a time. And it's the same to me. It was the same because now you're saying you're not pouring them all in. You have to do this one human being at a time. One human being at a time. So... You know, they, I, I, that took a couple of years. That took three or four years. But they all ended up in the sub basement because we didn't know what the heck. And by the way, uh, after the concert in the spring uh, and after the concert in, in December, I send in those back down to Norman High School and they help, they help to do that too. When I see someone from Norman, because we live out here and we see those former students from Norman, my wife's former students, and they'll say, this is what they, they'll say to us, how's our sculpture? which I love, how's our sculpture? Oh, I wanted to mention that I got a note one time with a, a bag of tabs on my step, maybe a hundred tabs. And I don't know who, uh, they, people leave them on their doorsteps. And there's a note in it and a woman and I, who this was, and it wasn't in our neighborhood because I didn't recognize the family. They didn't put their name. She said, I have two adopted daughters. And I think there were six and eight and she said, we talked about the Holocaust while we counted these tabs. And I thought, that's, that's what I want. That's what I wanted. I wanted them to think about the Holocaust too, not just collect tabs for me. And it's not an easy thing. One tab at a time, you got to take it off that can. There was a great project, one at a time, off of a can. You can't go to the store and buy those. You got to do them one at a time. So there's a school, and I forget, maybe Georgia? I forget that did the um, paper clips. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's a great story. They had a, um, they had a, a, a cattle car that, they were, that was donated to them, um, and they collected all these paper clips. And, that and I want to emphasize that what they did was amazing. But they could go to the store and buy by paper clips. <laughs> we had to individually take off each one. And I thought that, I thought that that was a, I, I don't think I wanted to buy paper clips. I wanted them to do them one at a time. And now they're doing them, now they're doing them one at a time here. The next shows a, uh, another little girl. <laughs> it's just a super little girl. And she, and you can see, you might even be able to tell how some of those are bent up. Those are the ones she couldn't get in. On, on, the, on the right hand side of her, her uh, right down there, yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, we eventually got them all in. And now, once we had this all done, once we had it all done, we had to say, how are we gonna get this thing built? We know what we want now. And we had the little, uh, if, I don't know if we were ever at CDS before the sculpture. The place where the sculpture is now was like a dirt parking lot. It was really a wreck there. Uh, it was a dirt parking lot. And that's where we're gonna put it. And, um, but you can't keep going to parents for money. You can't say we need, you know, this was gonna cost, I think it was a total of $200,000 to get this built and get you know the security all in there and all the things they needed. So we, if you go to the next slide, we decided, and this was covered by all of the newspapers and even the TV stations. You may have seen it. Um, this was covered our fake groundbreaking. We didn't have a penny to build this. And that's Rich Fitzgerald there. 
and um, uh, I'm in the middle. Uh, Corey uh, O'Connor, second from left. Yes, yeah, 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 that's him. Um, over to the right is Avi Monroe, the very right. And next to her is her father, Musha Baron, who uh, is really a hero to me. He's still alive. He's over, he's 100 or 101 now, just said his birthday. Um, Musha was, um, was in a ghetto and then he escaped from the ghetto and was, became a partisan. He fought in the forests. And that wasn't easy for a Jew because even in the, the partisans were, you know, they had to be careful. He fought in the forest. His wife, who has since passed away, Malka, um, was in a ghetto also, different one, and they met later. And this is one of the, for me, one of the, one of the really great stories. They got married and they had children. And those children have had children. And, you know, when I think of the sculpture, I think of the, uh, the hopefulness of things like that. So now we have no money, but we've got a, a fake groundbreaking. And, um, and then Nancy Tuckfelt and Gary Tuckfelt, and, and the groundbreaking was on April 19th, 2012. Nancy and Gary Tuckfelt, uh, with their daughter, Kara. Kara had gone to CDS. Now, Kara was not particularly religious, and I remember Kara. Uh, she didn't like going to services. She really resented going to services. But, but they, went to, um, they went to Eastern Europe. They went to uh, Poland, and they saw Auschwitz, and they saw other camps, and they lost family members in, in the Holocaust. And Kara was so moved by that that she said, we have to do something. And that was the exact same day we were doing this fake groundbreaking. The next day, Avi gets a call from Nancy and Gary and they donated $250,000 to get that sculpture made the next day. So it was like, you know, it, uh, it was, they, I can't tell you, and we see Gary and Nancy every now and then because they started going on trips with us. I, I don't remember if I remember, I mentioned that my wife and I do group travel. And so Gary and Nancy have come on a couple of trips with us. I think they're going to, uh, with us in January or February to see Hugh Jackman in uh, Music Man. Uh, but the next few sculpture, uh, uh, next few slides are the initial of the sculpture. So you can put up the next one. This is the foundation. And uh, the next one will show as they're starting to build a little bit more to it. Uh, next one again. This is where Gary and I uh, lay the first, the first the, uh, you know, block. And Nancy's standing behind him. And that's Avi Monroe and her, her dad, Moshe Baron. And the next one is uh, just a closer picture of that block. And then the final, I think this might be the final one. No, no, it isn't. Okay. The next one is just dedication circling. So groundbreaking April 12th, April 19th, 2012. Construction began April 2013. And then it was completed on November uh, 30th, November 3rd, 2013 was completed. And that's the next, uh, the next one, I'll, next slide I'll show you that. So it took four and a half years to count these, collect them and count them. Um, we had a lot of publicity, uh, a lot of newspaper articles, a lot of, I had a Chicago, uh, oh, what was it, the Chicago radio station that called me, it's, I guess it's one of their big stations in Chicago, and they called me and talked to me, and I was hoping something would come from that, but nothing did, but uh, uh, the number of people that were involved in this, and the number of people who helped and were concerned that it would get built, is really to me, um, I, I do get emotional thinking about that. And I think and when people ask me about it, I, I get emotional. I collected pop tabs. Um, the architect was Alan Dunn. The person who really got this done was Avi Monroe. All right, she would come to me and say, we are going to get this built. And she was so committed to it. 
And I'm looking and saying, you know, $250,000, you got $300,000 you need. And I don't think you're going to, I'm saying it in my head, I don't think you're going to get this built inside my head. I'm saying that, but I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. She did it. Um, I'm trying to think if I've missed anybody because there were so many important people in this. Uh, Alan Dunn with his architectural firm who did this, you know, just, just did it. He had two sons that went through CDS, two nice boys. Um, and he really doesn't get a lot of the credit that he should. Um, there's just so many people who were involved in this. I, um, I read a book once and I saw a movie. It was called Fault in Our Stars. I don't know if you saw that or read the book. Fault in Our Stars, uh, Shailene Woodley was in the movie and Shailene Woodley is now Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend. Uh, she was Hazel Grace and, uh, and Ansel Elgert, who I think is in West Side Story as uh, uh, I don't know if I get Tony. He plays Tony in West Side Story, this new musical. Uh, he played Gus. Both of them were ill and both of them were seriously ill. And uh, Hazel Grace had to have uh, oxygen. She had a bucket list that she wanted to uh, uh, something that she wanted to do, and that was to visit a favored author of hers in Amsterdam. So, you know, in the movie and in the book, they take her to Amsterdam to meet this author. But while she's there, she goes to the Anne Frank house. And, uh, and I'm going to read this quote because I can't remember it all. Um, she, in, you know, she's in the book. She, this doesn't appear in the movie, but in the book, you know, you can, she, her thoughts, you can hear her thoughts. And she said, I thought of Otto Frank not being a father anymore because Otto survived, left with a diary instead of wife and two daughters. At the end of the hallway, and if you've been to the Hank Frank house, you, you'll know this. At the end of the hallway, a huge book, bigger than a dictionary, contained the names of the 103,000 dead from the Netherlands in the Holocaust. And in parentheses, she writes, only 5,000 of the deported Dutch Jews, a wall label explained, had survived. 5,000 out of Frank's. The book was turned to the page with Anne Frank's name, but what got me, Hazel Grace, what got me about it was the fact that right beneath her name, Anne Frank's name, there were four Aaron Franks. Four. Four Aaron Franks without museums, without historical markers, without anyone to warn them. He said, I silently resolved to remember and pray for the four Aaron Franks as long as I was around. And so in that sculpture are tabs for those four Aaron Franks and for Anne and Margot and for, you know, uh, um, the two little children that, that I talked about earlier. I, when I think about this sculpture, Well, I have a great deal of pride over it. <laughs> and really, I want to emphasize that all I did on this was collect pop tabs. That's that's it. Uh, and count them and put them in blocks. The, the people who really did the work were the ones who, like like uh, Alan Dunn, who, who put this thing up, and Avi Monroe, who, who made this happen. Um, I just, I, I think that this re... <laughs> There's so many things that are, that are happening. There are so many things that, that are scary, you know, like in um, uh, in Virginia when the, they're saying Jews will not replace us, and uh, uh, you have uh, a, a female congressman calling out Muslim congressmen, uh, congressmen, congresswomen, congresswomen. Uh, you have. Uh, the ADL said that they're uh, they're in the last since 19, 2017 uh, incidents anti-Semitic incidents have jumped sixty percent. The two hundred fifty percent rise rise in white supremacist activity. I'm, I'm looking at this as a a positive, and not those statistics. I'm looking at the uh, the the um, sculpture is a positive and hope, you know, 
hope that it represents something better than that, better than those statistics. I, I, could, I could actually I cut a lot of things out because I, it's easier um, it's easier to talk about this in front of people, uh, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'd love to take any questions that you have. I, uh, oh, oh, before you do, I wanted to show you and go down to the next um, slide. This is what one of this, I don't, if you haven't seen it, this at nighttime is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous and it sparkles from all the tabs, but from a distance, you can't even tell the tabs. You walk up there and you look, and if you look closely, you'll see the different kind of tabs that are in there. That's a wall. Now the next one shows a from a, a little bit of a diff distance in the fall. It's just a beautiful picture. Um, and the next one is a close up where you can see that the walls. You can actually this is the inside, so you can go inside. And this was before it was completely done. They were putting some of the uh, sand in there. Uh, it was meant initially as a place to go to. Um, you could just go in there and, you know, and think about things. And, 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 but now it's not like that. This is the next one. This is slide at night, a little bit. Uh, you can see that it sparkles off the wall. Uh, and then the next one, if I can get down to the next one, I can't. Okay. It's the same thing. And another one at night from that, after the next slide, I think these, look how beautiful that is. Uh, and then you down, you just kind of go through the next three slides a little bit. There's another one at night, then another one that's look at look at this. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And then the, there's one in the day. I just put all the slides up because I love this. The final one should be the one that's overhead. Uh, that if you haven't seen it overhead, um, you can see the Star of David. And the next, the last one is a little bit closer, and you can tell it better. It's, it's just, it's magnificent to me. I think the artists and residents did a great job. The kids did a great job coming up with this. The architect, um, everybody is, so, it's just wonderful. So if you have questions about this, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, I'm not sure I, how much of a scholar I am on the Holocaust. I know a little bit, but uh, if you have questions about the sculpture, I can sure do that. I wonder how much time I took. Oh, I took too much time. I'm sorry. So we can run a little over. Bill, uh, how much maintenance and what type of oh, maintenance might be required? Uh, yeah, that's 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 exactly. Uh, they always have to. Uh, the The blocks will leak, and so it'll it'll start to look brownish, or the, they might crack. Sometimes they'll crack, so they have to be able to take out a block, which is very difficult. And then uh, and fill another one up, and then fit it back in there. So that's it, that's a, there's an expense in that. Uh, the maintenance of the area around the sculpture, which is also well done, it requires you know. So there's always a constant need for uh, to keep it looking good, and to uh, and to keep the surrounding area looking good. There's there is definitely maintenance on this. Does this community day pay for the maintenance or? Yeah, yeah they they. Um, um, well, they kind of fundraise for that. Oh. So yeah, they have a they have a special fund only for the maintenance of the of the uh, the sculpture. Uh, any? Hi, Mr. Walter. This is hi. Uh, hi. My kids were in CDS. Two oh. of them were at CDS at the time. You were counting pop tabs. Who were they? Becky and Leba Sable. Becky Sable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it was it was really a profoundly wonderful and moving project. Oh, it, yeah. was, it was for me. I mean, and I hope that it would be for them too. And I think most of them it was. Yeah. They, they'll even come back and uh, uh, I, I don't get to, I'm not down there all the time anymore, but sometimes I'll see, see them and they also are interested in how it's going. Anytime I've gone down there to, to talk, you know, it's it's so good that. Please tell them I said hi. <laughs> oh, you bet, you bet. I will. Thank you. Uh, wow, how about that? Yeah, uh, they they took it pretty. I I'm trying to remember. It's so hard to remember. You know, classes start to blend in together. I can't remember when people leave and when they uh, when they were there. But uh, 
geez, they, I, I, I would get all these cans too. And I can remember taking them over to, and I can't remember his name, um, one of the students' houses and we'd crush up the cans so that we had a lot of room for cans and uh, take them, th those we would sell uh, for the money so I could do the, the parties in the school. Um, but sometimes I'd give them to the Boy Scouts. Uh, I always had a lot, oops, sorry. I always had a lot of cans <laughs> too. It, I did enjoy that. And it did, they, they probably could tell you that took up a good portion of that classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, please tell them I said hi. <laughs> I will. I remember when you had, when Elena Hyatt Houlihan, yeah. the whole class make these models and they would be yeah. divided into groups of three. They made the groups little models. Yeah, it was such a, such a meaningful project for them. And they, it was actually hard picking out the best one. Yeah. But the, but the Star of David just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you can't tell it from ground level, but, you know, Above and you can, you saw that and I know I'm sure you've seen other pictures. It's just to me stunning. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, so I'm I'm proud of that. Even though all I did was collect tabs and put them in blocks. Without but, you, it definitely wouldn't have happened. It was, uh, it was great. Thank you. Well, thank you. So anybody else? I probably not a lot of questions. I think I pretty much. No, I, I, one other question. Is there a plaque or other signage uh, noting the, uh, the the sculpture and, and some of the history behind it? Yeah, there, uh, right out, uh, as you enter uh, from the uh, from the uh, parking lot, there's a there's a there is a plaque or, or a little thing that tells you the you know the number of tabs in the blog. It tells you all this the things. Yeah. And there are I, I, there are benches along there too. They're, con they're concrete. They're brick. They're stone. And there's six of them. And I thought initially because I said to Avi, does this represent, you know, the six camps that are considered to be death camps? You know, Auschwitz and Sobibor and Treblinka and Belzig and Kelmno and uh, Majdanek. And she said, no, it's just we did, I didn't even think of that. Uh, that's just a place to sit down. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, I love what they did with the, and you'd had a scene, I don't know if you saw it before they put the sculpture in there. It was pretty beat up. They did a great job with it. Question? Yes. Bill, um, first of all, I want to commend you on what a great educational action-based project you brought to these eighth grade learners. And uh, what a great way to present a, a concept like this through the process approach that you talk. In this, in this time that you were having your eighth grade students and others engage in this experience, did you ever witness them spontaneously talking about their, what they were learning, what they were getting as they engaged in this project? Oh. Uh, among among each other, I, I guess I mean, you would see that for sure. Especially the older kids, not so much the little ones, were just putting them in. Uh, you know, right? Well, just wanted ice cream. <laughs> but the older but ones, the were. eighth graders, yeah, eighth graders, and, and well, the seventh graders would do the counting also, and sixth graders. So uh, especially the eighth graders, because they were leaving, and they were it was like they still didn't want to. They want everybody wanted to be there when it was done. <laughs> so yeah, they did talk about it. They, yeah. So I, I think you went. I think you did a lot more, Bill, than just collect pop cans. <laughs> you brought out. Oh, you brought an educational concept to the forefront, and I commend you Thank for you. that. Thank you. That, that I that means so much to me. Uh, even now, and I've been gone eleven years, but even now. I look forward to, we, we have taken groups there and the school will allow me to use um, a classroom so I can talk to them and then bring them out and show them the sculpture. And uh, I, I love doing that. I love going back to the school. I love that they have docents and I forgot to mention this. The eighth graders now are docents. They, they'll pick a group, a group that if you want to be a docent, you can. And, and uh, because they have groups that come in all the time. And they'll take them around, tell them the story, and, uh, and they do a really good job. 
Um, that is Jackie Goldblum does that with them, and she's great. She's great. But I, 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 to me, even that, uh, that she's getting, and the fact that other schools come there to CDS to see that, it's pretty exciting for me. Yeah. Well, this has been, I'm, I'm thrilled that you asked me to do this and it's, uh, it's been really nice for me. Yeah, we want to thank you, Bill. It's really interesting stuff. I, yeah. I mean, I'd heard about it, but not in that kind of detail. It's really uh, interesting to see what's behind it. And yeah. And emotions. Look, um, I was absolutely ridiculously um, obsessive about it. I, I, I had a guy one time who, uh, he, his neighbor, and he would, you know, they, I asked him to collect them. And he said, he did for a while. And then he said, uh, it's a friend. He said, ah, I can't collect this for you anymore. You're too obsessed. He said, well, yeah, I'm obsessed. How are you going to get this done without being obsessed? But yeah, that, yeah, you're right. I'm obsessed. And if you haven't been there, you need to go and see oh, really? why you were obsessed. Because <laughs> it's a stunning experience. It, and it's bad. I, we often we have done a couple of times where we'll go there. We, we'll, we bring when people come to visit us, we always go. So we'll go uh, late in the afternoon, uh, show them at a daylight, go down to the waterfront or something, have lunch, dinner, and then come back at night when it really looks good. Uh, so they get two shots, two views of it. Uh, we had uh, friends come in from well, Oklahoma. Uh, they came in from Oklahoma. We we did that with them, and we have family that will come in. We always make them go. <laughs> What's interesting, uh, this is just a bit of historical, um, tri not trivia, but um, when St. Philomena's Parish came, yeah. the school, they put the church where the gym was going to be, and they were going to build the church right where the sculpture is now. That's oh, no. why there was nothing ever built there. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay, I didn't know like that. Full yeah. circle, yeah. Well, when, they, when we first got that school, and we had been on Forbes and Denison before that, it was too small for us. And uh, when we first got that school, uh, Sharon Stone did a movie there. Uh, I forget the name of it. Diabolique. Diabolique, yeah, I didn't I see the movie. I didn't see it because that was my church. So I refused <laughs> to go and see it. Yeah, well, they put a, a swimming pool between the, the two, you know, the rectory and, the, uh, and what was the school. And then they took it out. But yeah, the school was in kind of bad shape because we, we had walked through it and uh, they put a lot of money. We, we had a, a parent that donated quite a bit for that too. Um, it's beautiful. That, it's beautiful. The school is absolutely beautiful. It's well built. Uh, I like the gym up there. It was right over my room though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's okay. It was okay. And they did another movie there right after I retired. They did one with Maggie Gyllenhaal and a couple other people. And I forget it was something. I forget what the name of that one was. I didn't see that either. 